Okay, so now let's look at how carbohydrates and fat play a role in poultry nutrition. So carbohydrates make up 75% of the dry weight of plants and grains, and therefore, since plants and cereal grains make up the bulk of poultry feed, they contribute greatly to poultry feed. Now they are plentiful, they're cheap, and they're easily stored, and so they're going to be the primary source of energy in poultry diets, and therefore represent a great cost um, in poultry production. Now what are carbohydrates? Well carbohydrates are composed of carbon, uh, hydrogen, and oxygen. And it's usually in a ratio of one carbon to two hydrogens to one oxygen. Or you know you can think of it as a carbon for every water molecule. Uh, the most common and the one that's most important for our metabolism and nutrition as well as the chickens is C6H12O6 or glucose. Now glucose is the monomer that makes up the polymer of starch. And starch is the carbohydrate storage form in plants and is going to make a major contribution to the metabolizing energy in our poultry diets. Um, another carbohydrate, another polymer of glucose is cellulose. And so cellulose uh, versus starch. The big thing is starch is very easily digested and cellulose is indigestible. And sometimes uh, you can commonly refer to as fiber and we'll talk about although fiber is not going to contribute in any way to uh, metabolizing energy it can have benefits in certain situations so carbohydrates we have our monosaturides or disaturides and starch and they're easily di di digestible uh, just quickly you know monosaturides we have glucose galactose mannose um, I'll mention one disaturide just to bring you back to our digestive lecture. Uh, you remember starch is uh, taken in by uh, the, uh, the bird and then it's broken down by pancreatic amylase. And so one of the breakdown products is this disaturide, oh, no. maltose. And so maltose is a disaturide that's made up of glucose and glucose. And so this will be the disaturide that makes up uh, starch, and so the one that's often found in the GI tract of chickens. Now, um, sometimes the uh, starch content of a poultry diet can be referred to as nitrogen-free extract. And nitrogen free because you're not going to find the element nitrogen in any carbohydrate instead nitrogen is really only going to be found in protein sources and so a way of expressing uh, typically metabolizing energy uh, as a result from carbohydrates the cheaper car carbohydrates some will refer to it as nitrogen free extra now, again, as I said, chickens don't have the enzymes to break down cellulose, and that can be referred to as fiber. However, fiber can have some advantages. For instance, as consumers, American consumers, become more interested in animal welfare, um, fiber can, can, can play a role. For instance, if you have increased fiber in the diet, You can decrease cannibalism. Oops, sorry. In birds that are beak continued, so birds who have not undergone beak trimming, if you include fiber, it tends to reduce the problems associated um, with with beak continued birds. Also, including fiber at a rate of let's say two to three percent in the diet, that is going to uh, it's shown to increase gastrointestinal health. Um, some have shown it can increase, if we remember our digestive lecture, it can increase your intestinal villi height. 
um, and it can decrease pathogenic organisms. So decreased pathogen, increased uh, GI health through in increased intestinal villi. But if you're going to increase fiber, you're going to decrease uh, feed intake. And so as you increase fiber, so increase fiber, you will decrease feed intake. And so if you have less feed intake, how, what, what are you going to do? Well, if you have less feed intake, you want to really worry about energy level, so you should raise the energy. And also, you potentially have to raise, as we'll talk about later, protein density. Or really, amino acid density. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. So, sources of carbohydrates. So, cereal grains... Um, are going to supply carbohydrates, uh, are going to supply uh, the carbohydrate starch uh, to the poultry feed. The major source is corn, keen corn. Um, so corn contributes, uh, the, can, corn is most often found in the poultry diet in, in, in U.S. Uh, poultry feeds. It contributes around 10 to 20 percent also of the crude protein. Um, some other contributions of corn is it contains this xenophil pigment, which is going to cause uh, yellow skin, which the American consumer prefers. Um, another contribution is, especially in corn oil, we'll talk more in depth about this guy, but that essential fatty acid can be contributed by corn as well. Now there is a major issue with corn. And that is a lot of corn is now being deferred to ethanol production. And the, 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 there is a big concern in the poultry industry that, that as more corn is being used for ethanol, the price may continue to rise. In fact, the average price of feed, um, because of this diversion of corn into ethanol has increased by, some will estimate, um, by around 40%. And so that is a major concern for the poultry industry. So there are some alternatives. So many, we'll look at a few. So wheat and milo. So wheat may replace corn when, when the price is right. Um, it's slightly lower in energy, but a tad higher in protein. Uh, but one issue just interesting about wheat is it's gelatinous, and so it can cause um, kind of a pasty beak. And to prevent this pasty beak when you're feeding high amounts of wheat in the poultry feed, uh, it should be pelleted. Another uh, potential carbo carbohydrate source is milo or sorghum. And so this is a very drought resistant uh, crop that's grown throughout the US, uh, throughout the world in fact. But it probably shouldn't be used in very high amounts because it has what are known as tannins. And these tannins, which can pre precipitate protein um, would cause you to have to increase your protein source content and that's the expensive one so maybe not so so tannins you may just go back tannins you may think uh, I, I like uh, red Zinfandel that's very high in tannins if you've ever had a sip of wine and you get that, that dry uh, sensation it's usually a result of these tannins so that's how you can relate to that word so fats are very energy dense. If you recall the kilograms per gram when we had uh, carbohydrates and um, protein, there were about four kilocalories per gram, whereas fat is gonna give you a whopping nine kilocalories per gram, so very energy dense. And so that equates to about two and a quarter times more energy 
that can be given by carbohydrates and protein. Now any excess carbohydrates or proteins will of course be stored as fat, um, but fat is a major contributor to the overall metabolizing energy and the easiest way to manipulate it one way or the other. So there are different forms of fat and the major form of fat in poultry feeds are triglycerides. And triglyceride is a glycerol in three different fatty acids. So here's a glycer glycerol. And here are three different fatty acids. Now they come in two forms. You have saturated fat. And what saturated fat means is that anywhere a hydrogen can go in this fatty acid chain, a hydrogen exists. It's an essence saturated with hydrogens. And so let's look at this fatty acid and you can see anywhere a hydrogen is, or anywhere hydrogen can exist, a hydrogen is, so these are saturated. So saturated fatty acids are uh, what you typically find in animal fats. So animal fat and Sorry for the messiness. Um, they're going to be solid at room temperature. So very solid at room temperature. Uh, the other type is the unsaturated fatty acids. And in, in unsaturated fatty acids, they are typically uh, found as oils. And they have a double bond in their fatty acid chain. So if you include a double bond here, you're going to take away a hydrogen that double bond form causes it to kink and this kinking of these fatty acid chains prevents them from stacking neatly together and therefore they take this more liquid form and so there are two forms of fat unsaturated and saturated solid versus oil um, animal versus typically plant derived as well okay so we have triglycerides, which is a glycerol with fatty acids, the fatty acids that are attached to that glycerol can differ. And so we have different types, uh, palmitic, steric. Uh, these are going to be common saturated um, fats, fatty acids in animal fat. We also have um, linoleic, linolenic, and arachidonic. These are essential fatty acids. Um, the most critical being linoleic acid and so when formulating a poultry diet you really need to pay attention to the levels of your linoleic acid. Um, fortunately linoleic acid makes up oh, around 55 to 60 percent of corn and soybean oil which are major inputs or ingredients in poultry feed. Nevertheless, always look to make sure linoleic acid is in adequate amounts. So make sure you have all of the essential fatty acids um, because a, a, a deficiency in these essential fatty acids will lead to um, poor growth fatty livers, reduced egg production, and poor hatchability. Now there are some advantages to including fat in the poultry diet, and one is just increasing the tastiness. So increased palatability of the feed comes from fat, and with that you'll get increased feed consumption, and therefore better growth rates, um, and, and, and it can be more economical. You can really change the metabolizing energy available in the fat by changing the percentage of fat in the diet. There's also a, an extra caloric effect and so this extra caloric effect may come from a few things. One is it's going to decrease the rate of passage through the GI tract and so by decreasing the rate of passage you have more time for digestion and absorption of the nutrients in the feed. Another one is this, re this lower heat increment. And so the reduced heat increment of fat is 
because the conversion of carbohydrates and proteins to fatty acids is a heat producing process and so if you have adequate levels of dietary fat it prevents this energy wasting uh, heat producing process of um, making fats from protein and carbs to fat is wasted energy as heat and so it's going to um, potentially increase the available energy by lowering this heat increment and increasing absorption and digestibility it also acts as a binder for the feed and so um, it increases feed efficiency by reducing feed waste and so feed can be very dusty if you include fat in it it'll help bind it up and make it more palatable and easier for the chicken um, to to eat fat is also essential for absorption of the fat soluble vitamins and we'll talk about these later but a d e and k without adequate amounts of fat in the diet you cannot absorb these vitamins they're dependent on uh, fat for their absorption through the GI tract okay so some sources of, of fat there's tallow there's lard you can uh, use poultry fat a poultry byproduct um, yellow grease so you can get restaurant grease palm oil and then these two soybean oil and corn oil um, the one uh, important aspect of those as I mentioned before is they are going to give us our essential fatty acid that we want to monitor in poultry feed so fats are readily digestible but it's often best to use a mixture of saturated and unsaturated fats so saturated fats typically derived from um, animal so um, as we shown earlier lard tallow poultry fat and then unsaturated are plant derived and so that's typically going to be from soybean oil corn oil and sometimes palm oil now what's important is to mix these and get this unsaturated saturated ratio and it's often advised to keep your unsaturated levels at around 80 percent in feed formulation and then uh, you want to keep and make sure that 50 percent of these fatty acids are going to contain our linolytic acid so our very essential fatty acid and good thing that soybean and corn are very rich in our uh, essential fatty acid so overall dietary fat levels uh, can range from 7 to 10 percent and 2 to 5 percent so in the broiler versus layers uh, it's easy to manipulate that metabolizing energy by using cheap fat it's very energy dense and cheap the one thing you have to be wary of is its storage so fat cannot be stored very long because it runs the risk of becoming rancid um, it can oxidize become rancid and then at that point is unpalatable so the chick chickens are not going to eat it and also it can be toxic and um, pull out nutrients from the feed all right so next we'll go into proteins and proteins are a very important uh, figure or factor when formulating your poultry diets. Thank you and see you next time.